My name is Nova and today we're going to go over how to use Swift Soul iOS. Let's get into it. First, we're going to go over how to actually download the bot on your phone. Right when you purchase Swift Soul, it will lead you to this page. Go ahead and click on Connect Discord and it will ask you to authorize your Discord account. But if you've clicked out of this page by accident, don't worry, the same exact page will be sent to the email that you provided during checkout. If you can't find it in your email, check your spam folder since that's where mine was sent to. After you authorize your Discord account, you'll come across this page. Enter your email and phone number and press save. On this page, go ahead and join Discord because that's where the Swift Soul team will post any updates, relevant information, upcoming releases, along with the guides to go with it. Now go back to this page and head on over to downloads and click on send invite to email. We're not gonna do anything with the email quite yet. First, we head on over to our iPhone, go to the app store and search test flight, one word, and install the first app. It should look like this. Once you've got that installed, you want to go to the new email that Swift Soul sent you from your phone and select View in Test Flight. This should open up your Test Flight app with the option to install Swift Soul. So we're going to tap Install. And there you have it. Allow. Start testing. If it's your first time opening Swift Soul, it's going to ask you to log into your Discord account. But since I'm already logged in, I basically skipped that step, but it's quite self-explanatory. Whenever you want to open up Swift Soul again, you don't have to do it through test flight. It just installs on your phone as an app in a similar fashion to just installing any other application on the App Store. Now let's get into how to actually use it. The homepage is where you can see your previous checkouts, along with easy access to upcoming releases. The next tab is the modules. This is where the botting magic happens. We'll get into that into detail in a bit. The next tab is the profiles. This is where you put your billing and shipping details. And the last tab are the settings. While we're here, this is where you can put your Discord webhook if you want. However, this isn't really required. Region refers to the Supreme Store that Swift Soul will attempt to bot. So make sure you have this set to your local region or else it won't work. Background mode allows the app to run in the background when your phone is closed or if you're doing something else on your phone. Keeping this on would be ideal if you're running for restocks or if you're utilizing our smart task feature, which we will go over later in the video. Yes, your phone can be locked, but obviously this won't work if your phone is turned completely off. For now, I won't be using this. For proxies, generally, we don't recommend using proxies. The main two modules that Swift Soul supports are Supreme and Shopify, both of which have quite decent proxy protection. Proxies are currently not supported for Supreme, but it is optional for Shopify. Under browser settings, you have the option of logging into your personal PayPal account if you want to bot sites that use PayPal checkout. However, note that it will automatically sign you out after about 7 to 15 minutes. So if you plan to use this, make sure to plan accordingly. And I would also highly recommend logging into your Gmail account, as many Shopify websites use reCAPTCHA. Logging into your Gmail account will make those CAPTCHA puzzles easier to solve, resulting in a faster checkout. For module settings, you don't have to mess around with that. The default are what I would personally recommend anyway. If you play around with the settings and you want it to go back to default settings, you can always press the big reset all settings button. Before we start botting, we have to put our billing profiles in first. So we're going to head on over to the profiles tab and press the plus icon in the middle to add a new profile. For profile name, I'll name it to testing for now, and then I'll fill the rest of the details. If you notice, there's no way to have your shipping different from your billing, and that's because Supreme's checkout form doesn't allow you to do that either. And for Shopify, generally it's recommended to keep your shipping and billing the same anyway, because there's a chance that your order might get flagged as fraudulent for some of the websites with a more strict payment verification system, which may result in the cancellation of your order. After you got all of your details filled out, press save profile. And as you can see, our profile is now appearing in the bot. To edit the profile, you can just tap it and it will give you these options. For the account section, some Shopify websites do require an account to be able to get to the checkout page, the main one being undefeated. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my dummy account just for demonstration purposes. Now that we have that sorted, we're ready to make our tasks. First, let's cover Supreme. To make a task, click on the plus icon. 
Select the item that you want to go for. By the way, whenever there's a new set of releases coming out, typically this list would update 24 hours before the release. Quantity, typically you want to keep this as one. However, sometimes Supreme will allow you to buy multiple of the same item in one order. The last example that I remember off the top of my head were those Supreme Oreos that dropped. If there are any updates about the items where this applies, I would keep my eye out on my cook group or the Swift Soul Discord channel. Select the size that you want, color, and profile. You want to keep this in drop mode. Never use restock mode, even if you're going for restocks, unless you're instructed to do so via the Swift Soul Discord. Jig address. I'll keep that disabled for now, but what it does is it automatically adds characters in the beginning of your address during the checkout. Since this demonstration is just using one task on one device, this isn't necessary for me. So if we go back, we can see the task that we created. If you click on the task, we can start, stop, clone, edit, or delete the task. You can start and stop all tasks by pressing the plus icon again. Typically, you want to start all your tasks one minute before drop time. Before drop, make sure to also open the capture harvester like so. And then if there are any capture puzzles that are required, then you can solve them here. Going for a drop will look something like this. All right, now let's cover Shopify. Press the plus icon and create a task. Select the website you're going to be botting and then add your keywords. Keywords will be located in the release channels on Discord, so you want to refer to that for the most part, or you can consult with your cook group. Furthermore, if you have an early link, you can just copy and paste the early link here. Size, profile, proxy, all self-explanatory. Now we get to mode. Safe is just a regular checkout flow. The bot will try to add the item to your cart and try to check out. For most websites, however, you want to run safe preload. Ultimately, whenever each Shopify website detects a lot of traffic, they will put up a queue. Now, if you enter the queue and get through the queue within 10 minutes of the scheduled release time, then you can actually bypass the queue before the release. So for instance, if a release is scheduled at 10 and you enter the queue at 10, then most likely the item that you're going for will be sold out by the time you exit the queue. But if the release is 10 o'clock and you enter the queue at 9.52 and then you get out of the queue by 9.57, well, when the drop time comes around, you won't have to go through the queue again. That's why safe preload will be the mode that you'll be using most of the time. This procedure is typical for most Shopify releases, but the time the queue goes up will be different for each website from release to release. Alternatively, if you're in a cook group, they will tell you when will be the optimal time to start your tasks. So seven to 15 minutes before drop, you gotta be on high alert and make sure your Discord notifications are set up properly because even 10 to 20 seconds of hesitation from when your group announced to start your tasks might cause you a checkout because starting too late means you won't be able to pass the queue in time for the release. Extra safe is for domain change releases. If we open up the advanced settings, we also have manual payment option in case you want to type in your payment details manually. Not entirely sure when this would be necessary to be honest with you, but we also have PayPal checkout. Some websites only accept PayPal as their form of payment. So if that's the case for the website you're going for, number one, you want to have your PayPal checkout enabled. And number two, you want to make sure your PayPal session is fresh before a drop, just to make sure it doesn't log you out of your PayPal once you actually have to submit your payment. For site password, sometimes websites will require a password to get into the store. So you'd put the password here. For discount code, it puts in the discount code before the checkout. And then if an account is required for the website you're botting, you can go ahead and select your account, but typically not really necessary other than a few websites. 
for shipping rate. In theory, this should skip a step in the checkout process making the checkout faster. But personally, I don't like it because number one, I find that the speed difference is negligible even for Shopify where milliseconds do matter. And number two, if the shipping rate that you use is incorrect, then you will get errors and you won't be able to check out at all. Number three, it's a lot of work having to scrape shipping rates for each website that you're going for. Usually for major releases, there could be like 10 Shopify websites dropping on the same day and scraping shipping rates for all of those websites and double checking them for each release can be quite tedious. So I wouldn't worry too much about shipping rates. For start time, you can do manual or timer. You'd want to do manual though, because as I mentioned before, the correct start times will vary from website to website, release to release, not exactly something that you plan ahead in advance for. For most websites, you don't really have to worry about any of these settings, but if you want to double check if any of these are required for the websites you're going for, you can check the Swift Soul Discord or your code group. I'm going to press save and there it is. If you want to edit the task or start or stop the individual task, just tap on the task and it will give you those options. If you want to start all your tasks at once, you can tap the plus icon which will give you the options start all tasks, stop all tasks, delete all tasks, and mass settings change. We're going to go into the mass settings change as that's pretty important. For monitor delay, if you're doing the typical Shopify preload settings, you'd want to start your tasks at anywhere between 8,000 to 13,000 millisecond delay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. You also have the option for mass link change, site password change, and discount code that will apply to all of your tasks if you fill in these entries and press save. For most Shopify releases though, you won't be needing that. You want to start your tasks when the queue goes up timing it so that you pass within 10 minutes of the scheduled release time, or start your task when your cook group advises you to. Keep running, don't stop them, and then about 10 to 20 seconds before the drop time, mass edit your delays anywhere between 2000 to 3000 milliseconds, depending on how many tasks you're running, and make sure you have your capture harvester open too. Right at drop time, if the site has a checkpoint anti-bot, then it will ask you to solve one CAPTCHA puzzle per task. Solve them as fast as possible, and your task will attempt to check out the item that you're going for. And that covers Shopify. This is what a Shopify drop should look like using SwiftSoul. Now let's go over the tools. We have a Q tool. This can be used for anything where it would be beneficial to have multiple browser sessions. If we head on over to notifications, we can make it so that your Swift Soul app notifies you when one of these sneakers drop on any Shopify websites. Simply select one of the sneakers that you want to get notified for and tap on monitor. Success, you will be notified when this item releases. So if we go back to the settings, we can see that sneaker is now in our monitors list. You also have more options if we back out of this and then go to releases. You can select any of the upcoming releases and tap monitor. It will automatically get added to your monitoring list in the same exact way. So when a website drops any of the sneakers that you have on your list and you tap on the notification saying it released, you can choose which web browser you can check out from. If you use Safari, Safari will open up and take you directly to the product page of the sneaker and you can check out that way. Alternatively, if you select in-app, then it will open up a browser in the app. You can choose your autofill profile and when you get to the checkout page, it will automatically fill out the details from the profile you selected. Furthermore, you can add your own custom monitor. So if there's any sneaker here that you want to be notified for, but it's not in the notifications list, then you can make your own keywords and you can add those to your monitoring list as well. You're probably wondering if there's a way to combine these powerful notification tools with the auto checkout function of the bot. And yes, you can with smart tasks, but for that to work, you first need to turn on background mode back in the settings page. Okay, so once that's on, let's go back to modules, add a smart task, and here we can pick from release where you can pick from any of the releases here, or you can search the item that you're looking for using the search bar. 
pick the websites where you want your smart tasks to start from, or press select all. The websites you select will show up on the bottom. Next, you can set a nickname for it. And this will not affect the way your smart task functions. It's just for your personal organization. And fill out the other settings, similar to making a normal Shopify task. For mode, safe would be quite standard. And for cooldown, that determines how many seconds pass by between the time your smart tasks picks up and when it will pick up again. For instance, if your smart task gets triggered by a restock for this shoe from Kith, it won't create another task for another 30 seconds or whatever value you decide to put in here. Save task, success, and there it is. You can also add your own custom smart task if you're more familiar with each website's naming conventions for a better chance of your tasks actually triggering when the website restocks. So that about covers the entirety and the basics of Swift Soul v3. If you need any further assistance with how to use the bot, then feel free to go over to the Swift Soul v3 Discord, go to Ticket Creation Channel, click on Create Ticket, and their team will be able to assist you with your inquiry. My name is Butterboy Nova. It was a pleasure assisting you today. Good luck with the drops, and I'm out.